This is the church function, and we still give the Lord honor and praise. Amen? Amen. Well, we are all here today to give honor and glory to our pastor, Pastor Reverend R.G. Hardy. Let's give him a round of applause. He is celebrating, if you don't know, 90 and has all kind of wonderful words on it and the bathroom is through these doors across from the bar if you're up on top they're down here you don't have to go all the way to the restaurant to use the, the facilities all right all mine's clear all stomachs empty all right father we thank and praise you for this time that we can come together and celebrate the life and legacy of rg hardy Lord, we ask that you would fill him with joy, that you would fill him with love, not just your love, Heavenly Father, but the, let him feel the love of each and every one that is here today. Let him be overwhelmed, Father Lord God, with the joy and love of the people that you have given him. Lord, we ask that you would bless this food. Let it be a help to the, to the eater and a blessing to those that have provided it so lovingly for us. Heavenly Father, we just ask the Holy Spirit to come into this place, into this space, because where you are, Lord, is holy, and we give it honor to you, and we ask, Lord, for your humble blessings. In Jesus' name, amen. Amen. I want to draw your attention, please. Just, there's room back here. I want to draw your attention to this wall because most of you haven't been down this way. But if you can see this stuffed toy, who does it look like? Archie. Well, you know, I have to tell you the backstory. We went to West Virginia to visit Todd and Amy, and there's a Goodwill near their house. I love to go to Goodwill. Benny hates to go to Goodwill. But it was vacation, so he was humoring me and said, all right, I'll take you. So we went to the Goodwill, and they're about ready to close. So I really can't look, and I'm hurrying up, scurrying this, and something caught my eye. And I looked, and I saw this. It was brand new in a plastic bag. It's this stuffed toy. I said, I can't believe it. It was only $3.99. <laughs> so I grabbed it and paid for it. And we got back to the house, and I didn't say anything. I showed it to Todd and Amy. I said, does this remind you of anyone? And they all said, Papa. <laughs> so because of that, and then if you look in the center page of your uh, program, you'll see a drawing there of Brother Hardy. 
Scott wrote this many, drew that many, many years ago while he was sitting in church board and whatever, during the service. He wrote that, and I came across it. So that's why we have up here the famous saying, hum and a hum. You're not a helping me. <laughs> and you know, back when Sister Hardy was Mrs. Legion. <laughs> and over here, I feel like traveling on. We know we always like to end with that. So what we're going to do is you're going to come up here in a moment to get the fruit and such. And if you want to, not everyone has to, but if you want to grab one of these pieces of paper and write down a short hum and a ha saying that you think about Brother Hardy, I'll be collecting them throughout, and somewhere later in the program, I will be reading some of them. So that is something you can do if you would like to. So at this time, what we're gonna do is we're gonna start with the head table and these two tables to come up here, and then we'll just go right on through. And there's also a buffet up there for those that are in that room. You have a buffet there, okay? All right, well, let's get started then. I know you all are eating, but just give me a couple minutes. Can you hear me back there? All right, we want you all to be included also. We're here to celebrate my pastor today, amen? And I don't know, I think that I'm probably one of the oldest that have been here the longest. I said one of. <laughs> I came in 1966. She was 67. All right. So I came from humble beginnings. So when I came to Faith Tabernacle, what I was used to was singing around Baltimore City in a choir. And we used to sing um, Edwin Hawkins songs, amen? We used to sing stuff like, like, like this. Anybody recognize that? This is what we used to sing. Oh, happy day, oh, happy day. Oh, happy day when Jesus was. I'm so glad he was. Oh, when my Jesus was, he washed my sins away. Oh, happy day. Okay. <laughs> so I get to Faith Tabernacle, and here goes Sister Hardy on the platform. Brother Bobby Williams was on the piano. I was like. Everybody on the door.
know, the Lord blessed me to go to West Virginia. West Virginia with Brother Hardy. And I thought everybody ought to know it was a shot. Brother Charlie, did you get salmon? Yes. Okay, right there. Thank you very much. I was like, where am I? Whoa! So what I'm gonna do with this? And the very first time we went, we didn't have any music. Right. I was like, oh my goodness, I gotta sing with them. Okay. I said we'll make it work.
do your heels, all right? Do my Hello, I'm going to walk around and round, round and round. The wheels go go round and round. Ah, the teeth in the jar go chop, 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 chop. The teeth in the jar go chop, 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 chop. Ah, the tail, the hair on his head goes bye, 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 bye. bye, 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 bye. Brayden, that was a great job. Yeah. Amen. Give me five, bud. Yeah. Praise the Lord. <laughs> so in case you didn't know, it was the wheels on the walker. Go round and round. The teeth in the jar go chomp, chomp, chomp. The hair on the head goes bye, bye, bye. And the ears on the head go, huh, huh, huh. So that was a wonderful job by Braden. Amen.
tell you, I've seen faces I haven't seen in years. It's such a blessing. I saw someone sitting over that table right across from me as I came in here. And <laughs> she kept telling me who she was. <laughs> but I didn't recognize her. Well, but I recognize you now, my sister. I love you. <laughs> I love you. This is going to be a little jazzy song, y'all might know. I want you know, for y'all spiritual. I don't want y'all to get offended. So if you know the song, you can pretend like you don't know it. But let's see what you can do with it. I will bless the Lord at all times. His praise will continually be in my mind. I love to worship him. And I was born to worship him. And I learned it here at that tabernacle. On that choir. Taught us how to worship. Yes, it's not about just singing. It's not about your voice. It's not about my abilities. It's not about my talent. It's about praising my God. Yes. That's where I live. Yes. Yes. And for all the things that were meant to the Lord and to my friend, that's what I praise Him. That's what I praise Him. And from that song, and out of His mouth will come His words. In the name I will praise Him. So y'all be ready.
Uh, Michelle McDougal, please keep it brief, because I know you get long-winded. If you do, I will, I will just cut you off. Huh? He's got the keys to my car, I just want to say thank you to my pastor, R.G. Hardy. I waited for him, so that's why I'm walking out here. I just want to thank you, Brother Hardy, for being a faithful servant of God. If it had not been for your ministry that my aunt brought me to, Back in 69, I was about 13 years old. I don't believe my two sons, Raymond and Corey, too young, can y'all stay? Would have been here today. Because of your ministry and what you taught me, how to war, how to fight in the spirit, how to keep my boys covered in the blood of Jesus, I just want to thank you for your ministry and being a faithful servant of God. I love you so dearly. Love you. I think you speak for many, many here today. Many mamas and many grandmamas. Amen. I think what Michelle said fits many people. Amen. All right, let's see who we have. Bruce Jones. <laughs> Well, greetings, everyone. I just like to say, Brother Hardy, I came over to greet you earlier, and I just like to once again thank you. I, I was I sent the email, but I think it was a little bit too late. Did you get that? Yeah. But I wanted to to, to come today and just to express uh, my gratitude uh, because it was because of your uh, connection through Apostle, the late Apostle Timothy Timothy Baylor, and your in relationship with you that he asked you and Sister Hardy if you could uh, maybe ask around in the church to see if someone would, would have space because if he had a member that, that needed to re relocate to Baltimore. We were, we were on the Eastern Shore at the time of Maryland. To re that come to Baltimore to rejoin, uh, rather to reconcile with his family. Well, that didn't work out, but I'll tell you what. I came to Faith Tabernacle and uh, and as a result of coming to Faith Tabernacle, I met you and I was able to, you know, to just be a part of the, of the ministry and to be matured and raised up. And, uh, you know, to just to meet so many uh, other ministers here that at the time that were there and relationships that have now gone, I'd say, you know, 40 years. It's been 40 years, I believe, since he I came to Baltimore. I think it was 1979 to be exact. But Brother Hardy, I'm here today to just to thank you. And uh, thank you for giving to the Lord. And uh, because you're the reason why we're all here today. And so I just, you know, on behalf of my wife and I, as a result of that connection, I, I, I married a lady that I've been married to for 36 years. And from that union, we've had two children and now three grandchildren. Just, uh, just sent my oldest grandson to college here last week. But it's, be, it's because of the seed. Hallelujah, yes. that you sowed. And I'm your harvest, I'm a part of the harvest. Glory to God. I just want to thank you, Sister Hardy. Thank you, Sister Hardy. All right, let's see who we have now. Brother John Haslin. If we keep brief, I might be able to get everyone in, but if, you know, somebody goes all three, just jump in. Who asked for it? Brother Hardy, Sister Hardy, and then we signed here today. Brother Hardy, what can I say? Almost 32 years ago, I came to New Jersey. And I was going through some things. And got married young, and things didn't go well. And I can remember being in a very dark place. And saying, maybe I might go back to doing what I was doing. You called me on the phone. And said, the Lord put you on my heart. And he said, whatever you do, don't you dare quit. He said, you can't quit. 
He told me to get in every service I could get in. And I came. Time went on and, and you know, we got through the Bible college and all of that. And I remember uh, we felt like we were going out and preaching on the street and, and different things like that. And you asked me one day, you feel like you, you called to do something. I said, yeah, he said, okay, we'll come down to the church. And I invited some people on my own, uh, Brother Sonny and Blair. We came down to the church ready to have you lay hands on us and anoint us to go into the world and preach the gospel. <laughs> and when we got to the church, he said, you made it, huh? We said, yeah, he said, good. Get out back and cut the grass. <laughs> grass. We cut the grass and came back in. He said, you finished? He said, yep, he's all right. See where else you need to go. The bathroom needs to be clean. You need to do this, you need to do that. He said, then come to the service. I said, okay, well surely he's going to anoint me now. <laughs> Got in the service, he said, come here. He was praying for people. I said, what is he going to do? He said, stand right here. I said, for what? He said, stand right here. <laughs> I stood there for about two or three years. No, no joke, about two or three years. And then finally they let me preach in a midweek service. Amen. And that's been over 25 years ago. Amen. And so about the pastor in New Jersey, all the people we have came directly from you. Thank you for loving me, loving my family, but never giving up. Amen. We just love you. It's not enough words to tell you how we feel, but we so appreciate you. God bless you. Amen. Amen. All right. Sister Eva. Sister Eva, don't preach. Because I have other things coming up after this. So. I just want to thank um, Pastor Hardy and Pastor Hardy, both of them, Sister Hardy. Um, they both have meant a lot to me, and I am who I am today because of them. And one thing they did was hide the Word of God in my heart. And you know, I've, I've had to travel over to the Eastern Shore and minister, and people preach crazy things. But I thank God for the soundness of the Word yeah. that has kept me, and I'm able to help others. Because I still remember the day I came to Faith Tabernacle. My sister Thelma invited me to a revival. And when the man of God preached, I thought, who told him all about me? <laughs> and I felt such convicting power of God. How many know what convicting power of God is? That two blocks before I got in that church, I was shaken. It was the convicting power of the Holy Ghost. And you know, when I got in there, he called an altar call, but I couldn't even stand up. I was like a rag doll, I just went down. And he came to me and laid hands on me. And I went under the power of God, never experiencing anything like this in my life. And when I came up, I was speaking in the Holy Ghost. <laughs> but how many remember Mother Shaw yes. and Mother Hardy? Yes. Prayed me through till two in the morning. <laughs> That's when the mothers of God were there for you. But I knew that was my church. But I traveled with an evangelist at that time. And I wanted to go to Faith Tabernacle, but she wanted me to go everywhere with her. And I finally had to obey the Holy Spirit and kind of separate, but I loved her to death. But I knew where the Lord wanted me planted, under the Word of God. And you know, I thank God for all of you that are here today to respect them. Because these two people are people of sacrifice. Yes. They never took vacations. They were there night after night. I'm talking about seven days in church. Yes. And they were always there and they gave up a lot. And I thank God for their sacrifices. Thank you. And she says, well, we need to keep her in prayer because she had a situation just a week ago. She was hospitalized because she had so much fluid around her heart. 
she told me nine pounds they removed and she's going to have to seek other treatment so let's pray for her right now father we ask you right now to touch eva from the crown of her head to the soles of her feet whatever this is that's caused this congestion around her heart we rebuke it at the very source and we ask the healing power of jesus christ to be made manifest in her body right now and let the church say amen, amen. well now we've only got one left i wonder who that is Sister Ann McDuffie. <laughs> she is probably, I'm trying to think. The oldest person. Yes, I am, Sister Shirley. <laughs> After brother and sister Hardy and me, she's the oldest member here today. She was well, I had a setback, but I came back. <laughs> God is good. You know, I was looking at the picture of my grandmother and Sister Walker. My grandmother was one of the first African American members, and I was the second. <laughs> but Brother Hardy and Sister Hardy, I just want to say thank you. We appreciate you so much teaching us how to be sanctified and holy and consecrated and how to pray and how to fast. Yeah. And you know, I still want to be holy. Yes. Yeah. But I still want to tell you, Brother Hardy, I am saved. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> you know, Brother Hardy, for the longest time, at 848 William Street, when my husband and I came back, he would say to me, are you still saved? I was like, yes, I am. But he would, I found out he said that to a lot of people. Like to ask Sister Christine yeah. and those who are they working with her to be get they ready, to be getting ready. They you might want to make your way to the um, sound sure. machine. Sure. But these sure. came through yeah. through um, Facebook, and I'd like to share some of them huh? with you. She still had a so All right, uh, Dad, this um, is from Brother Ed and Sister Frida Berea in Kenya, East Africa. As you all celebrate Brother Hardy's 90th birthday, from Africa, we join you in celebrating an icon of faith of our time. His love for Jesus is so contagious. His passion for the salvation of Africans is so remarkable. No wonder when he gets into glory, the largest group that will welcome him in heaven will be Africans. <laughs> <laughs> Happy birthday, Brother Hardy. Brother Ed and Sister Frida Berea and thousands in Africa. Oh. Wishing Brother Hardy a happy birthday and a big thank you for the many years you have labored serving the body of Christ with integrity and honor. And in a deep love and commitment to the Lord Jesus Christ to preach the uncompromising gospel of the kingdom of God and remain faithful to reach the nations also. Thank God for your wonderful wife, Sister Hardy, who was a precious jewel to the body of Christ. May you have an amazing celebration on your birthday, filled to overflow with love and joy. Sister Fanny Logan, Jacksonville, Florida. Yeah. Happy birthday. Thank you for the years of preaching the truth so that we have a firm foundation. Yes. May God richly bless your birthday, Charles and Nancy Carver. <laughs> Happy, happier, and happiest birthday to a great man of God, Reverend Victoria Port Berrio and family from Liberia, West Africa. Yeah. 
Now I have a couple from people that are here today. I'm going to read um, just one of them, I guess. I like this. Let me see. I found it. I am blessed to be a part of a ministry under the leadership of a great man of God with the heart of God who never compromised the word of God. Happy 90th birthday, Sister Patricia Brown. Happy birthday, Brother Hardy. Thank you for being my spiritual dad. I think that speaks for everyone. God bless you, Cynthia Chance. To my dad on his 90th birthday, when I was a preschooler, you took me everywhere. You and Granny were my 1950s daycare. <laughs> we went to Holland's Market and all your church errands. When I chattered nonstop, you'd say, count to 100, Sharon. When I kept asking questions all along our way and you were tired of answering, finally you'd say, okay, Sharon, now count Fords and Chevrolet. <laughs> And I did. <laughs> the three of us went on many street meetings. While you preached, I yelled out passionate greetings. I wanted to help you. I thought you were fighting. <laughs> but all the while, I was catching the anointing. You took me on the road when I was just a teen. Hands-on ministry training that supported me. Walking in my calling, learning from the best, how to fight the devil, how to pass the test. You imparted to me a love for God's truth. I learned the power of study by watching you. We discussed the scriptures, took Greek classes together, honing our craft, our teaching to better. You were my father, my teacher, my mentor, my pastor. I have been your associate, announcer, and ghostwriter. I am my father's daughter cast in your mold and have stepped in your shoes now that you are old. I do my best, but your footsteps are huge and there will never be another preacher like you. Amen. I can't climb the pews or throw ladies' hats <laughs> or prophesy for an hour and a half. There's only one R.G. Hardy unique man of God, and it has been my great honor to call you my dad. I became your little girl when you were 22, and all these years later, I am still your Rooney Boo. At this time, I'm going to ask Sister Christine Holland to come. Hold up. She told me I'm not saying nothing. <laughs> well, I tell you what, when you think of all these years we've been together, the ups, the downs, the hard places, the high mountain tops, we've been through a lot together. And next month we'll be married 29 years. 69. <laughs> He said, 
I want you to stop yelling at me. <laughs> I said, well, when I talk to you, you don't listen. And I was just calling. I was so aggravated. He said, I'll tell you what. I'm putting in for a divorce. <laughs> anymore. That's all I've ever done is preach. That's all I know to do is preach. And now I can't preach anymore. I can't do anything. I don't even want to use the word that he used when he referred to himself because it upsets me that he felt that he was worthless. And he said, I just want to go home to heaven. That's all I want to do. And so this has been what he's been saying for well over a year now. And um, so finally I started like, saying, well, but dad, don't you want to go to your 90th birthday party? 
And he was like, yeah, yeah, I want to go to my party. I said, well, you've got to stop saying that. Stop saying that. You don't want to go home. You want to go to your party. So he stopped saying it. But the other Sunday, I came in, and I said, how are you doing, Dad? Not so good. What's wrong? I thought he was going to tell me his back hurt him. Something else bothered him. He said, I want to go home. I'm weary of this life. So as you read the words of the song, as it's being sung, I want you to understand that we decided, Sister Hardy, his wife knows him better than anybody, and myself, we know his heart and we know where he is and we felt that it is better to give somebody their roses while they're living than when they have passed. These words of this song, you would, you would think that someone knew Brother Hardy and wrote these words for him. And so we have changed the words from another soldier is going home to another soldier longs for home because that is what he longs for. So if it bothers you, I'm sorry, but we want to honor him with these words. Listen to the words of this song. Listen to the words of this song. His back is bent and weary. His voice is tired and low. His sword is worn from battle. And his steps have gotten slow. But he used to walk on water. Well, it seemed that way to me. I know he moved some mountains, but never left his knees. Strike up the band, assemble the choir, another soldier longs for home, another warrior here.
Another soldier longs for home. Do it again! <laughs> How many feel that those words are appropriate for Brother Hardy? Because this is the desire of his heart. Amen? All right. Happy birthday to you. 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 Yep. Yeah.